what's really good my name is Shay and this is my channel manifesting with karmic sight gal if you're new here welcome and thank you for joining me and if you are part of the spiritual family welcome back so if you can see from the title of this description I am back with another animal totem video these animals have been on my ass okay and I feel like I just absolutely have to get these messages out to you guys because you want to know, like, what these messages mean when you see them, okay? If you are like me, if you're an animal lover or you feel naturally inclined or, like, just gravitate towards them, then you probably see animal totems all the time. Animal totems can be used just like angel numbers as a way to connect with your spirit guides to receive messages from your ancestors so if you can see from the title of this video today i'm going to be talking about three insects uh well technically one of them is not considered an insect but we'll get into that <laughs> so the first animal i'm going to be discussing today is the bee okay now this insect has been following me for quite some time now i want to say a little bit over a year and i didn't understand why i wasn't getting why it was resonating like it wasn't resonating with me while i was seeing this animal you know what i mean so i'm just gonna talk a little bit about this animal totem and what messages that you can get out of them if you frequently been seeing bees okay so first of all bees signify uh, fertility and abundance they stand for activity movement hard work having a process or making um like a schedule kind of like everything having a place or a job or like a function in the world and they're also related to wealth and can be a sign of good luck when you see them okay so the first thing about bees is naturally a lot of people are afraid of them and when they see them they're like you know like uh like freaking out and most people know that usually animals kind of mind their own business they this earth is their home just as much as it is ours so as we occupy our space as humans we kind of have this ego that we're supposed to be somewhere and they aren't okay like this was once only their home so we kind of have to put some respect on their name you know what i'm saying and it's like bees do have singers and bees do sting but their main purpose is actually not to sing at all they are about creativity and movement okay bees really resonate closely with the number five and i'll tell you a little bit later here which was another like epiphany i had <laughs> so first of all bees use their stinger just out of for protection so when you see a bee a lot this may be telling you um that you may be feeling like you need to protect yourself but in all actuality you might need to let some walls down you know what i'm saying let people in and around you it might seem like you are being too protective of yourself so if you've been seeing bees out lately that could mean that it's time to get out there and everybody's not out to get you okay um and bees also of course make honey and when you think of honey you just think about how life is sweet you know what i'm saying something so delicious and tasty could come from a uh, insect that people are generally afraid of it's just like has that yin yang energy of uh you know you got to take the good with the bad like you got to be able to see the good when times are hard and you have to be able to see that times can be bad sometimes when it's good and know that that doesn't take away from your good experience so when you see bees a lot then that can mean that you know you just need to really kind of allow yourself to have space to be where you are in your journey when you're seeing it be okay everything has a reason and a season and we have to be able to go with the flow of our journeys okay or else we get stuck so 
Bees have over 20,000 species um, and they are entirely dependent on flowers for food. So they don't eat anything. All they do is basically um, cross pollinate, which I think people don't realize as becomes or bees are becoming extinct that they do help us to get more new breeds of flowers and plants because what cross pollination is is just taking some of the pollen to one plant and as they go to pick up more from the other they leave others behind and this creates new species of plants and this is how we have so many different species is because bees have been around so long these originally were the only sweetener that humans even had to begin with before sugar was created before they were able to get sweetener from other plants like sugarcane so this is a very ancient insect the very interesting thing about bees to me is that females do all of the work honey okay um, males don't do anything so basically there are two different type of bees there's solitary bees and um, what they call social or non-social so non-social is obviously the solitary bees this would be like loner bees um a female bee that kind of just on her own and she might have like a small honeycomb so or she might even have like an underground like nest and you might see these sometimes like on your home people see them in porches or like in the roof like where the garage is in the corner like very very tiny honeycombs and it's because there's only like one bee there um, and of course when she lays her eggs then there will be many bees but that's why when they start so small like that and then there's the social and this is the whole hive honey this is the colony of bees so the queen ant she lays two different type of eggs they are called fertilized and non-fertilized now the non-fertilized is the male bee and the fertilized is the female bee so um the fertilized bees they come out and a certain portion of them are queen bees but only one of them can be queen so they pretty much have to fight it out to, to have that number one spot so i feel like there's a message in that in itself that like if you want to be the queen if you want to be the queen then you have to be in a willing to put in the work put in that effort the queen bee she eats what we call royal jelly and if she stops eating royal jelly or has like a diet that is less of that then she'll become a worker bee and it's just like uh, also another message in a sense where like how you have to leave kind of things behind or whatever leave people behind and leave old habits behind it's like once you introduce yourself to a certain lifestyle um what i like to call like spiritual luxury once you get to a certain place in your journey you're not doing certain things that you used to do you don't have certain habits that you used to have and you can't really keep up with the joneses no more you got to do your own thing so when you're seeing bees, this is probably a message telling you that it's time to branch out. It's time to go ahead and get with yourself, your higher self, and figure out how can you become more in alignment with your purpose. You know what I mean? So um, the really cool thing about bees is they are what we call polyandrous. And the queen bee, she has many male bees that she uses for their sperm so that she can lay more eggs and that's all they're good for they're what you call drones <laughs> on a hive it has six combs which stands for like nurturing and self-care and um comforting yourself and finding balance between giving and receiving so if you're seeing bees frequently that could be a message as well that could be your guys telling you like hey you have been pouring a little bit too much out and not into yourself and you need to take some time to do some self-care okay now um i have really been getting in touch and learning more about deities and i cannot say that word for the life of me i hope y'all know what i mean like african gods and goddesses deity 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 i don't know how to say it <laughs> but the one that mostly resonates that resonates with the bee is oshun if you know anything 
Um, if you're spiritual, I'm sure you heard of her. Or if you know anything about African mythology, then you've heard of her. There's a story of when these gods and goddesses were sent to the earth to create earth. Oshun was one of them and they basically did not value her. They did not think as a woman that she could be valuable or that her opinion was worth anything. But the thing is, is that Oshun is, she is about purity, fertility, love, sensuality, and she is what gives love into the earth. And you know, everything needs love to grow. Like you cannot grow without love. So, she left, she goes to the moon, the world starts to decay, they cannot figure it out, they can't get right, they go back to God, God's like, where's Oshun at? They're like, I don't know, what did we need her for, you know what I mean? And they did need her, and they had to apologize, and then she decided she would come back and come to earth. And a lot of people say that Oshun has left Earth and it is because of the disrespect that we have done to the Earth as far as not care for it or, you know, not, um, you know, take advantage of the resources. That's pretty much what humans have done, like farms, everything, made everything for profit, made everything so masculine. And we really need to get back in touch with the feminine energies. So, also, if you're seeing bees, it's telling you to get in touch with your feminine side. You know what I'm saying? Learn how to receive. Like, if somebody is telling you they want to help you do something, let them help you. If somebody is offering you something and you just don't feel comfortable taking it because you haven't been in a position to be able to take things, somebody always taking some shit from you, take what they're offering okay do not block your blessings and that's a message within itself okay and if you're seeing bees it just means that you could be extremely lacking self-love like if you feel that you don't deserve for people to give you things or you don't deserve to receive things it's because you don't love yourself as much as you should um to the level of where you know like i'm that bitch I know what I deserve. I know what I'm supposed to get. And that's on period. Um, so, also with Oshun, though, she definitely carries the energy of vanity, um, jealousy, and spite. So, if you are seeing bees as well, you might want to just, like, check your ego at the door. You might be feeling like something is all about you and it's really not, okay? Um... You might be jealous of where other people are in their space of their journey. And you not, you guys know something I always say on my channel is comparison is the thief of joy. If you keep comparing what it is that, you know, if you're good enough or the opportunities other people are going to be giving you, that's attention that you're giving and focusing on them to help grow their dream. You're literally giving energy to that person when you could be focused on what you could do to make yourself get to that next level or just being happy and at peace with the space you're in and your journey now okay and Oshun heavily resonates with the energy of the five um the five when you see it i'm gonna draw an invisible five it is the only number that is open on both sides and that is the energy of giving and receiving so you got to learn an equal give and take and find balance in your relationships so the next animal totem that i have been seeing a lot lately and just kind of popped up the other day i was cooking something i don't know what i was cooking but when i went to go reach for the jar i didn't realize it ever before that it was a little ladybug on a jar and it was nothing it was a food item it had nothing to do with ladybugs and i was like hmm, that's interesting i was already planning to do this video i was like let me go ahead and include ladybugs because one that's a common bug and there's also a lot of misconceptions about bugs i mean about ladybugs so the first thing is um ladybugs are actually a beetle okay and the next thing is that ladybugs could be all type of colors they could be red yellow orange pink white green you can see a ladybug and it could be a different color and they also don't all have um dots some of them have stripes they can have between 
six and 24 dots okay so they are very unique and different and all this stuff so when you see ladybugs often this is first of all a sign of good fortune when you see ladybugs uh, this is telling you that you're gonna have like a financial blessing or opportunities coming into your life when you see ladybugs this is very like a innocent um, vibration and it really stands for trust and adaptability and also wish fulfillment okay so when you see ladybugs this is just saying like you are coming into those manifestations are coming to fruition that you've been asking for it's like everything is falling together okay and that you just need to trust the universe and adapt to your surroundings adapt to the environment you're in now the space in your journey that you're in right now okay when you um see ladybugs it's like people think or there's like a common saying that the amount of dots that they have is how old they are and their dots actually have nothing to do with age at all you can actually tell their age by how much their color is faded so if you ever see a ladybug and it's like not really red it's like lighter faded red or something or even almost white it's because that ladybug is old okay and ladybugs have very interesting um life cycle okay ladybugs are eggs for three to seven days and um for two to four weeks they are a larva and for five to seven days they are a pupa and then their adult life is actually only a few months so they have a pretty short lifespan so this kind of significant signifies like um very quick changes that is happening in your life when you see ladybugs you know that there's change coming and to just be adaptable go with the flow um because it's gonna happen quickly stay grounded okay when you're seeing ladybugs this is telling you to stay grounded when you see ladybugs this is just telling you they carry the energy of like the number nine this is like telling you that you are entering the next space in your journey this is telling you to like leave behind things that are no longer serving you and to really kind of take a moment to sit with yourself and see what is actually benefiting you or which is draining you and then you know um, making arrangements to prioritize the things that are helping you grow and if that's necessary removing the things that are not okay and it's just telling you to really trust yourself trust the universe have faith that everything is going to happen as it should and um not to be worried or stressed because things are going to unfold natu unnaturally um ladybugs are really associated with children you probably see them a lot in children's books posters little um toys and when you go to the doctor's office it'd be a ladybug room and this is because um ladybugs really are about inner child healing when you see in ladybugs frequently this is telling you that it's time for you to click, get into that shadow side honey it's time to for you to take a step back and see if some of the behaviors and thought patterns that you learned growing up were just coping mechanisms and if they are like i said still serving you or not it's time to maybe like find things that are better for you now like when you was younger you probably had to do certain things that have certain behaviors to get through in life but as an older more mature person that stuff don't benefit you it actually harms you like not communicating like as a child people expect children to kind of like be quiet like have a closed throat chakra they call it like respecting elders and like me personally as a parent i don't do that to my kids they allowed to speak freely and some people think that it's disrespectful but i think that i'm actually preparing them to walk in their higher self to speak up for themselves to advocate for themselves and if you're seeing lady books frequently that's telling you that either you do need to advocate for yourself more often um or you know that you need to really get to the root of that childhood trauma and why it is that you feel like you can't communicate properly or something like that i mean it don't have to just be based off of communication it could be anything so you just want to figure out what is blocking you because those blocks ultimately keep you from moving into that next space of your journey and the ladybug is all about getting to that next space in your journey it's all about 
what's next okay um it's kind of like that energy to me y'all remember i don't remember what year this was but it was like those keep calm on instagram it would say like uh keep calm and blah 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 and it'd be a little crown up there keep calm and blah 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 like ladybugs have that energy keep calm and carry on like period okay just move through life um so some interesting facts about ladybugs is that they do hibernate um so this when you see uh, ladybugs this could be telling you that it's a time for you to take a break this could be a social media break this could be a break from doing so much work or having too many products uh projects loaded on your like table your lap or whatever um and this could be telling you just to kind of like seek within yourself like if you're looking for answers or trying to make a decision for you to just spend some time alone so that you can find out because the answers are always within you you know what i mean like definitely meditation helps you find yourself another fact about ladybugs is they actually pretend to be dead like out of protection so if there are like birds or basically any type of um animal that means them harm then they protect themselves by playing dead so this really resonated with me by one keeping your business private like kind of just not always telling everything so that you're not getting out these outside opinions and stuff like that and then it also resonated with me like uh, once again going back to that inner child of those coping mechanisms um and what you do out of protection and just knowing that it's okay to trust other people and you don't have to like do all these elaborate things to try and protect yourself and keep these walls up to keep you from forming deep and meaningful connections because ultimately as people we are meant to be connected to others and it helps us grow relationships help us grow um uh ladybugs have six legs so that's a very nurturing energy that's the very like you need to go ahead and take care of yourself energy another thing about ladybugs is they smell with both their feet and the antenna so that was really speaking to me heavy root chakra any energy and also heavy crown chakra energy which was interesting what i just said about the keep calm and carry on and had the crown so this is really one telling you to connect your root to your crown like basically all of these things your root is your fears your doubts you not being sure of yourself your root once you have that grown once you feel comfortable within yourself and it's like you feel strong in who you are when things happen to you when you get into situations or whatever it doesn't move you it's like you are so into yourself that nothing can move you nothing can shake you nothing is going to basically penetrate you your root chakra is basically like the foundation of yourself and your life so if your root chakra is made out of fucking play-doh like when something comes at you in life it's just going to fall apart ultimately. It's going to get hard and then it's going to break apart. But if your root chakra is made out of brick and it was layered and layered and finally crafted, you know what I'm saying? Then when things happen to you in life, those situations are not going to change you and they're not going to impact you negatively. You're going to be able to learn and grow from them gracefully. <clears throat> um and another thing is there are tens of thousands of species of ladybugs so if you know any um if you don't feel or see anything else when you see a ladybug know that you are basically one in a million and it's very important for you to just be really connected with your higher self and understand who you are um like a song that really gives me that is find your way back by beyonce and this is like really getting back to who you are who god created you to be and connecting with your ancestors so you can find those things out 
I high key saved the best for last because uh, I was really excited to talk about this insect, which is technically an arachnid, is spiders. I love spiders, and this is very interesting because actually, spiders is something that I really had to heal with my inner child because I used to be terrified of them, and not just like I didn't want to kill them or I was a little bit scared of them like I actually would have an anxiety attack and sometimes fall out actually hysterically cry like I would just sometimes even just stand there like I couldn't move I was terrified of spiders and now I feel so comfortable with them I never kill them I respect them, I respect their energy, and I'm grateful to have them in my space, okay? So, the thing about spiders is they carry the vibration of eights, okay? Which is the vibration of karma and money and infinite energy, understanding that anything is possible. This is such a beautiful energy, and for people to just go around killing spiders is just kind of like, fucked up to me because they really help us in so many ways first of all if you're afraid of spiders if you're afraid of insects period the last bug you want to be afraid of is a spider because they are basically population control for other insects if you have a couple spiders in your home they're taking care of other insects that are trying to enter your space every season here come these damn ants trying to come into my windows. And guess what, honey? I don't have to worry about that because as soon as they try and make their way inside, their ass is fucking spider food, okay? So, spiders stand for manifestation. They are the feminine energy, so they stand for receptivity, okay? Uh, creativity, abundance, patience. Spiders are just everything, okay? So the first thing I'm going to start with is what I said about patience. Obviously, everybody knows that spiders spin webs. They are made out of silk. And the very interesting thing about this silk is it is very strong. Um, they, if it was as thick as a pencil, if a spider spun a web as thick as a pencil... It could actually stop a Boeing 757 jet in air. <laughs> That's how strong it is. It's literally as strong as steel. That's crazy, okay? And there's so many different ways that spiders spin webs, depending on what type of species they are, or how it is that they capture their food, or what's the purpose of the web. So, some webs are used for catching food. Some of them are used just for getting from different places to another. And that itself is a message, okay? Like, just being in the different spaces of your journey and how they're all connected. Now, I'm going to get back to the patience. So, spiders spin their webs, and sometimes they could be very elaborate. They can take hours to spin. I remember one time I spent a summer at my aunt's house and she, it was a spider that lived on her porch and it probably was the size of this baby grinder, okay? Which, this is a small grinder, okay? My hands are small, but for this to be a, a spider size, to me, that's like a pretty large spider, okay? And I would stay over there sometimes and I would catch the bus to my high school from my aunt's house and we only used the front door at her house. So every morning I would go outside in the front door and the spider would be in the middle of spinning his web right across the steps on her porch. So I would have to climb over the side so that I wouldn't like disrupt the spider. And every day it took the web down and every day it rebuilt the web. And that was how it caught its food, how it, you know, had made its living, so to speak. So that requires a ton of patience. One, to put the work in to do the creation of 
making the web but also the patience of waiting for the food to come now not all spiders wait for their prey but a good portion of them do and when they do they very pretty much just hang out all day and wait until something comes and i felt like that was really giving me what's for you is not ever gonna miss you because they don't go out seeking for things you know what they are seeking is already seeking them there's something on that web that's going to attract whatever other insect and then next thing you know it's caught up and that is how we should be in life you know what i'm saying like we should never be chasing anything we should just simply be attracting <laughs> attracting and desiring and whatever i desire i attract because it is also attracted to me and that is how i manifest a beautiful life um spiders also stand for receptivity so this could be telling you that you need to listen more and speak less this is telling you to be more comfortable with receiving and this may be telling you that you're in a space of your life of learning where you need to be intaking knowledge and really receiving information um and for you to just be patient for your time like wait for your time to come when you see spiders they could signify that you need to do some shadow work because the number eight the vibration of h with they all spiders do have eight legs and contrary to popular belief all spiders do not have eight eyes um some of them have six eyes some of them have eight eyes and some of them have even more eyes than that which is interesting to think okay and some of them even have no eyes so they carry this vibration of eight which is the energy of karma and basically you know what you do into others comes back to you what you reap you're gonna sow it is that energy and just karma in general like things that you are catching up with your past life or even you know when you were younger and things like that it's like all of these lessons are just our shadow work is finding us it's telling us what areas that we need to be healed in when we find us, ourselves in situations where we're triggered or, um, you know, just don't feel good about a situation, it's literally your body is telling you, hey, there's something up right there, something that needs some healing that you need to work on. Um, now, an interesting thing about spiders that okay we know they have fangs we know they spin silk but did you know that they don't have any teeth <laughs> they actually use their venom to liquefy their prey and then they suck the food like there's no teeth okay <laughs> so Spiders also have the ability to see both UVA and UVB rays, and some of them can even pick up more color spectrums than we can um, as humans. I'm not sure if you guys know that, but we do not see all of the colors. There are way more colors than we can imagine or pick up or perceive with our eye because humans' perception is very limited. As much as we think we know, we have no clue about what is really out there or around us, okay? Um, so this could be really telling you when you're seeing a spider to pay attention to your natural instincts and use your senses like not only just your sight but what is going on in your life what are you feeling you know what i'm saying what are you saying out of your mouth what are you hearing what are you putting surrounding yourself with um what are you feeling what are you experiencing in life and how how is that connecting you to your higher self you know when you see a spider that's constantly at constantly asking you to just be aware of the space that you're in right now um and to be honest to yourself of where you are at in your journey and what you require okay um some spiders actually mimic ants 
and there's like over 40,000 species of spiders as well um, and when I thought about these spiders that mimic ants I just thought of what we do sometimes like fit in or blend in so that we can try and get ahead in life and I want to say like the only way to really truly get ahead is to stand out and I feel like that is a message that somebody needs to hear um spiders spin up to seven different silks like i was saying different purposes for different things that they require and they're actually nearsighted so spiders can only see like what is really uh close up to them and once again this is telling you to be very perceptive and be aware of your surroundings that you may be kind of looking too much at the bigger picture and not enough at um you know what is exactly in front of you sometimes it's like we be searching for answers searching for answers searching for answers and it should be right there in front of us like just telling us what it is that we actually need to be doing um and so what i was going back about saying the spider's eyes some of them have six like brown recluse only have six and some of them they can have up to like 12 eyes and some of them don't have any eyes and they can only eat see the shadow or the lights um and you know when you see a spider this is telling you that you need to get in on that shadow work or whatever you know spiders are really heavily equated with like halloween and like the occult and like witchcraft and um that is because it stands for the darkness and w what it is that needs to be healed and what it is that we need to find within ourselves and sometimes we like are so hyper focused like almost having this toxic positivity in our life that we're avoiding confronting issues and stuff that we really haven't because you know we just want to be happy um but the ultimate way to happiness is through healing and you do that like i said by being aware of your triggers and doing the work to heal those so let uh spiders can lay up to three thousand eggs at one time so this goes back to that energy of the creation and also of you just working on many things or knowing that whatever you're working on is very going to be very fruitful and it's going to provide you with a lot of abundance when you see um spiders just know that that is like um a money message that's telling you that everything's going to be okay financially and that you have blessings coming to you in a material way whether it's like a new promotion or a, a new job that's going to be a better pay or you hit the lottery or you just somehow get blessed with some money out of nowhere when you see spiders that's a message especially white spiders i actually recently got this piercing and it is can you see it it is a little tiny spider it's a little white spider and i the girl who does my piercings she posted a bunch of them and she was it was a gold spider she actually posted and i have some gold and some silver piercings jewelry like on this side i have some that are gold and silver and some of them are you know gold like that have both gold and silver so i was like she said she had a white one and i was like oh i want the white one because white ones signify money and i've been very intentional lately about what i'm putting on and in my body and i just knew i needed to have that spider i seen a snake and i was like mm, that's too much transformation for me i think i'm gonna choose a spider and i did and it's very cool and my girlfriend named her and she just be chilling or whatever her name is freddie say hey freddie y'all okay um another thing 
is that spiders, when they give birth to their eggs, some of them die and some of them stay alive and they carry the spiders, uh, the baby spiders, like the eggs on their back until they hatch. And um, that was like very interesting to me because that was very telling of like sacrifice of them doing a job to like basically die so that they can reproduce and actually some male spiders are just prey for females um some of them purposely put themselves into a web and then put themselves in the part of the web where this the female spider keeps her food until she eats them like they literally sacrifice their life they get her pregnant and then are like eat me <laughs> so interesting so this is really telling to say like there's some sacrifices that need to be made in order for you to get that financial abundance and you just have to figure out what that means for you in your journey the space that you're in right now what it is that you need to be like releasing that's what i really want to say about the occult though is that when you think about like the eighth house that is um the house of basically death occult mystery magic and how it is that you're going to um make your money what type of money that you're gonna have like stocks or like investments and stuff like that so you know just know that spiders are filled with abundance if you see them don't hurt them if anything remove it if it bothers you that bad but like let them niggas live you know what i'm saying um and the very last thing about spiders that was super interesting is that spiders actually, um, what am I trying to say? Their silk is actually liquid. It's literally wet. And then it hardens after. So that was some telling me about emotions. You know what I'm saying? Like our emotions are fluid and then, you know, if we don't resolve them or if we don't like you know heal from emotions or feel them as they're coming then they are they will harden us certain emotions so we want to make sure that we are feeling them as they are coming to us and letting them pass through of us and not stay with us i really do hope that you guys enjoyed this video please let me know below in the comments if any of these messages resonated with you if you see any of these atom totems and leave a comment and tell me what you want to see next in the animal totem series because i love doing these videos i love animals and i honestly know like hella random facts about animals anyways so let me know um if you haven't already go ahead and watch my other videos for the animal totems i've done one with birds and then another one that had like other insects in it as well so go ahead and check those out Make sure you're following me on Instagram and Twitter at Karmic Psychal. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like this video if you did enjoy it. And of course, share if you care. Help me to grow my channel. And I'll see you in my next video. Peace.